Anybody that's just now joining us, why don't you go ahead and let us know your name, your troop number, and where you're from in the chat box. All right, to start off our meeting, we're gonna go ahead and do the Girl Scout Promise and Law. So I'm gonna unmute everybody and we can say it together. Our data is still My honor. I will do my best. Considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible, but I Respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place. You already know this by the time. Okay. So as I stated earlier, we're going to be working towards the brownie bugs badge today. The steps in this badge are step one, draw a bug poster. Step two, try a bug craft. Step three, see bugs in action. Step four, explore bug homes. And step five, take a bug field trip. The purpose of this badge is to know all we can about bugs. And by the time you finish this badge, you should know a whole lot more than what you know right now. So for today, we will only be working on step one, draw a bug poster, step two, try a bug craft, and step four, explore bug homes. The supplies you're gonna need for today are a large sheet of paper or poster board, coloring utensils, a book or a resource on insects and bugs, a paper plate, pipe cleaners, googly eyes, and a blank sheet of paper. So before we get started, are there any questions? I don't see any, so we're gonna get started. So let's quickly talk about the difference between bugs and insects. Though many people call insects bugs, a bug is actually a certain kind of insect. True bugs have a mouth shaped like a straw that used to suck nectar from plants or blood from other insects. They also have a special type of front wing in this badge, we call all our insect friends bugs, even those who aren't true bugs. Spiders are related to bugs and insects as well, so we're gonna learn about them today too. So why don't you girls tell me what kind of bugs you see most around where you live in the chat box. For me, I see a lot of insects and arachnids. I don't really see as many true bugs. Mosquitoes. And what kind of bug do you think a mosquito is? Do you think it's a bug, an insect, or an arachnid? Rosalie, cockroaches. Water bugs from Olivia. Ladybugs and beetles and mosquitoes. Ants. These are all bugs that I see around too. These are great answers, girls. So now we're going to move to step one, draw a bug poster. 
for this step, you have to pick a bug that we want to learn more about. And then we're gonna need to read a book or watch a video about this bug. After we've completed that, we're gonna make a bug poster of our bug where we label the parts of the bug and answer all of the questions on the all about my bug box over in the right bottom corner. So for today, I picked the roly poly bug. It's a bug I used to see all the time when I was growing up. I don't see them that much anymore, but when I was thinking about what my favorite bug might be, I think my favorite bug is a roly poly. And so that's why I picked it. So while I get this video ready, why don't some of you girls tell me what your favorite bugs are? Honeybees, oh, ladybugs. Carpentry bee, oh, those are, I haven't seen any of those this summer. The world stands still, we keep moving. We teach something, learn something, try something out, or just go for a ride, shop online, pick up Today on Animal Fact Files, we're talking about roly polies. Roll your cursor over the sub button to stay up to date on new episodes. Thanks to Casey for today's suggestion. Apparently, these critters have many common names. I've always known them as roly polies, so that's what we're going with today. But let us know in the comments what you call them. Roly polies look similar to sow bugs, but they're different in that they can roll up into a ball, a trick that has earned them the common name which we're going by on this episode. This rolling behavior is dual-purposed in that it is defensive and it helps retain moisture. If you've ever wondered why a roly-poly looks like the giant isopods living at the bottom of the ocean, you likely won't be surprised to learn that roly-polies are themselves also isopods. Of course, they're obviously not giant-sized like their ocean-dwelling cousins. Roly-polies actually moved from water onto land, and they've adapted to live a fully terrestrial life, but they still have some holdovers from their once watery lifestyle. Gills in an aquatic animal make sense, but in a fully terrestrial animal, they're somewhat out of place. Because of their gills, roly-polies require moisture in order to live, and they'll actually dry out and suffocate if they can't get enough water. Talk about a fish out of water, or an isopod out of water. Roly-polies are some of the only crustaceans that have developed an entirely terrestrial lifestyle. After moving to land, roly-polies set out to conquer the world, though it took them some time. Roly-polies are originally from Europe, but at this point they've become what's called a cosmopolitan species, meaning you can find them just about anywhere that's suitable for them to live. As long as there's enough water, and the temperature is appropriate, roly-polies can be found just about anywhere. Of course, there can't be too much water because they'll drown in aquatic environments. Roly-polies are generally nocturnal, spending their days hiding under rocks or rotting logs. Rotting logs are a great place for roly-polies because they offer a banquet of food. Roly-polies almost exclusively eat decaying plant material. Like the earthworms we've discussed previously, these terrestrial crustaceans help to promote the development of topsoil. It has even been suggested that roly-polies help reduce heavy metal ions in soil and may even contribute to regulating the global temperature by consuming fungus that release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So, even though some people see them as pests, they can actually be beneficial. Roly-polies live an average of two years, but some can live longer. Babies will develop in a brood pouch carried by the female roly-poly and hatch within a month's time. The babies will stick around until their first molt, then head off on their own. During the course of a year, a female may produce two or even three brood pouches, all containing anywhere from 100 to 200 eggs. Throughout their lifetime, roly-polies have to watch out for spiders, lizards, and small mammals, who may take them for a tasty snack. Even some humans have partaken in meals of roly-polies, calling them wood shrimp. I don't even eat regular shrimp, so I sure wouldn't be trying one of these guys. How do you feel about dining on roly-polies? For more facts on roly-polies, check out the links in the description. Give a thumbs up for roly-polies, and thank you for watching Animal Fact Files. Okay, 
Now that we finished our video on roly polies, we are going to create a poster of our bug. So for this poster, you're going to answer all of the questions in the All About My Bug in the bottom right corner, and you're going to draw a quick picture of your bug. If you don't want to do roly polies, that's okay. You can do any other bug. Just make sure you find a resource that's a, that can answer all of the questions for the All About My Bug. We're going to take a few minutes to work on our post. For anybody who's going to be working on the poster right now and is going to be using roly polies, why don't you come into the chat box and answer one of the questions for us? Where do you think the roly poly lives? How long does it live? Do you remember what the video said that it eats? And then the other questions that you could maybe answer for us. What do you think is good about a roly poly? Who do you think is not so good about a roly poly? And who are a roly poly's enemies? So what we're doing right now is we are going through step one, draw a bug poster. We watched a video on roly polies. And for those of you who want to do the roly poly for your poster, we, um, that's the one I'm working on. But if you want to choose a different bug, you can do so. Just make sure you have resources available to answer the questions on the um, all about my bug box. The questions are, where do I live? How long? Where does your bug live? How long does it live? What does it eat? What is good about the bug? What is not so good about this bug? And who are its enemies?
So for those of you working along with me, if you want to show your poster, this one is mine. I had to get on Google to find out who the enemies of the roly poly are. And I found out that it is frogs, newts, toads, spiders, and other small mammals. But for where they live, they live in the soil. They live about two years. They eat decaying plants and fungus. And from the video, I don't know if you girls remember, but it said um, that the roly polies could be potentially helpful for global warming. And so that's what I put down for what's good about them. And then what's bad about them, I just couldn't find anything bad. But if you girls have any ideas of what could be bad about roly polies, just let me know in the chat. Alrighty, we're now going to move to step two, draw or try a bug craft. So for this step, we're going to be making a paper plate spider. For this step, you're going to need the supplies listed on the screen, paper plate, coloring utensils, pipe cleaners, googly eyes, and if you want to, or an adult around an adult allows you add some glitter or some stickers to your spider as well. So the picture on the bottom right is some paper plate spiders that were made and I found them online. So you can make yours look like that or you can make yours look however you want to look, however you want it to look. I'm gonna be making mine and if you girls want to follow along with me, I'm showing it down here on my screen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paper plate and I'm gonna color it the color I want my spider to be. I want it to be black just cause I have a lot of colors for the legs and so I want it to be kind of a neutral color for the main body of my spider. Does anybody want to um, tell me in the chat box maybe what um, what their favorite kind of spider might be? I only know a couple different kinds of spiders. The spider from Charlotte's Web, I'm not actually sure what kind of spider it is, but that'd probably be my favorite kind of spider because it was really, really nice to wilbur. Tarantula, Addison says none. <laughs> That's fair, that's very fair. Spiders are kind of scary, but they're actually really, really good for the environment. They um, they eat other pesty, pest-like bugs like flies, things that we don't want around us. So when we're killing spiders, that means we're letting other bugs like flies and gnats live. So that's normally why when I see a spider inside, I normally try to catch it and just let it go outside. Daddy long legs. Oh, there's a cool black widows. Are, I think black widows might be, is that the one that's poisonous maybe? Maybe not, I can't remember. Daddy long legs are though. Those are really cool. They're like so harmless and so I hate when people kill them because their mouths are too small that they can't even bite people. Speaking of biting people, has anybody ever been bitten by a spider? You have Addison? Anybody else been bitten by a spider? I've never been bitten by one either, but my sister was bitten by a spider, has been bitten by spiders twice since we were little. She's also been stung by bees a couple times as well, but that's neither here or there. I think that's just her thing.
Golden silk spiders are my favorite. I've never heard of golden silk spiders. I'm gonna have to look those up when we get out of here today. Okay, my plate is all colored black. And so now I'm going to, I'm gonna add my googly eyes next. Give my spider a face. If you don't have googly eyes, you can obviously just draw on your eyes while you're coloring the body of your spider. And I have some glue for my googly eyes. Tarantulas eat birds? Really? Tarantulas are the one that a lot of people have for pets. Do any of you girls have a pet spider or want a pet spider? How many eyes? You can put however many eyes you want to put. I'm just using all the ones that I had with me. Spiders, I think spiders have a lot of eyes. So I'm just putting them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have nine eyes, but you can put however many you want. If you only want to put two eyes, if you only want to put one eye, you can do as many as you want to do. If you want to put 20 eyes on your spider, go right ahead. You're gonna put six, awesome. Addison answered my question. Does anybody else want a pet spider? They have nine eyes. Thanks, Madeline. So this is my spider's face. With my googly eyes, my eyes kind of move around when I turn it. And so now what we're gonna do is we are going to add our legs to our spider. I'm using pipe cleaners and I have eight different colors. So all of my legs are gonna be different colors. I have glue and I'm going to tape my legs to the back of my plate. I mean, glue my legs to the back of my plate. I think I might also tape them down just in case, because I don't know if the glue is gonna dry fast enough for the legs to stick. So what you're gonna do with your legs is you're gonna take them and you're gonna bend your pipe cleaner in half and that way your spider has bent legs. And then you're gonna tape or glue down each leg, four on each side of your spider. If your paper plate has um, ridges or indentions, it might be easier to glue down the legs in those spots. I thought so. Glue doesn't really want to work for me today. Hopefully it's working for you girls, but I'm just going to tape my legs down.
while we're working, does anybody have any questions for me? For those of you who aren't able to do it right now, but you're going to do it later, here's some snippets from the badge book. There's some words worth knowing, some bug jokes, and even a way to tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth. And so I'm going to leave this up while I finish putting my legs on my spider. Okay, I finished my spider. Can you see it? So those of you who've been working with us, why don't you show us what your spider looks like? All right, Asia, that's awesome. Madeline, that's great. Okay, we get finished with our spiders. How'd it go? It's still going. <laughs> That's Kayla, guys. <laughs> All right, so step four, explore bug homes. This is the last step that we're gonna do today do together today. For this step, we're gonna be drawing a cocoon. So you're gonna need a blank sheet of paper and some coloring utensils. But before we start drawing our cocoon, let's watch a quick video on what happens for a, for a caterpillar to become a butterfly. What would you do for the power to fly? How about shedding your skin and dissolving your own muscles? Now, believe it or not, that gruesome process is how caterpillars earn their wings. Here's what you might not know about what's inside a caterpillar's cocoon. Contrary to popular belief, this is not a cocoon. Only certain moths build cocoons, which are like a silky sleeping bag that covers the insect. This, on the other hand, is what's called a chrysalis. It's not a sack or a pouch. It's actually the caterpillar's own body. When it's time for the transformation to begin, the caterpillar's body ramps up production of a hormone called ectosone, and that causes it to cast off its outer coating, sort of like how a snake sheds its skin. And underneath is a hard shell, similar to the exoskeleton of a beetle. After that, life for the little caterpillar gets oozy. First, it releases enzymes called caspases. These rip apart and dissolve cells in its muscles, digestive system, and other organs. 
but the enzymes don't quite liquefy all of the caterpillar. They leave key structures intact, like breathing tubes. At the same time, specialized cells called imaginal discs start waking up. Before the chrysalis stage, these discs were kept dormant by a series of hormones in the caterpillar's body. But once the transformation begins, those hormone levels take a nosedive, giving these discs the opportunity to do what they do best, build a butterfly. You see, each disc contains the genetic recipe to form a different adult body part, starting from the inside out. After one week, the digestive system of the butterfly is well on its way. And by day 16, the adult's legs, wings, eyes, and mouth are all present and in working order. Now, two weeks is a remarkably short time for all of this to happen, since each imaginal disc starts out with only about 50 cells and must multiply those into thousands just to form a single wing. And if you checked out the chrysalis around day 16, you might even be able to see those brilliantly colored wings. Because for some species, their chrysalis turns transparent in their final days of metamorphosis. Now, fully formed, it's time to hit the road. The chrysalis splits open down the center and the butterfly escapes. Meanwhile, a reddish liquid spills out. That's all the waste the butterfly, nay, caterpillar, produced during its stay. Once its wings expand and harden, it's ready to mate, pollinate, and slurp nectar to its heart's desire. But one of the most interesting parts of all, research suggests that butterflies and moths can remember their caterpillar days. In one study, researchers trained moth caterpillars to associate an odor with an electric shock. So whenever the larvae smelled it, they'd move away. But even after they transformed into adult moths, they still avoided the scary smell. It makes you wonder what else they could recall from their younger days. watched our video on how caterpillars become butterflies. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on a picture of what we think it looks like on the inside of a cocoon. So what's on the screen is a photo of some butterflies that are found in South Carolina. And it's just gonna be up while we work on, a pic on our pictures, okay? So earlier we saw um, on, from the badge book an example for how we can tell the difference between butterflies and moths. For those of you who are finished or those of you who aren't drawing right now, why don't you tell us another way you think you might be able to tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth? The size. The crystal is.
The color, yeah. The color was what I was thinking. I know that most um, moths are kind of neutral colored, like browns and tans and things like that. But butterflies oftentimes have bright colors, especially around here in South Carolina. But in other places, butterflies can be muted because they come in so many different colors and they can often blend into their surroundings for camouflage to avoid their predators. And so their wings will be the color of the area that they live. So they might have wings that look like leaves or they might have wings that kind of look like tree bark. Or sometimes what they'll do is they've developed over time to where their wings look like that of a different insect that the butterfly predator does not eat. And so the butterfly, when its wings are spread, looks like something other than a butterfly, and that way predators don't want to eat it. And that's another way that they use their wings for safety. While we're finishing up our picture of our butterflies, why don't do any of you girls see any picture or any butterflies in the picture that you think you've seen around your house before? The monarch butterfly, I think, is one that I see all the time. Okay, this is my idea of what maybe it looks like on the inside of a cocoon or a chrysalis. Did anybody else draw one? The red stuff is because when he said when the butterflies come out, they get rid of all their waste and that was red. And so I just colored the extra space in my chrysalis red. Awesome. Asia, I didn't get to see yours. Can you put it back up for me? Good job, Addison. Okay. So now we're going to recap. So today we worked on step one, draw a bug poster. Step two, try a bug craft. And step four, explore bug homes. Now it's time for you to go out in nature and see real life bugs with your own eyes. So for step three, see bugs in action, um, I suggest the step where you watch three bugs. So you look for three different bugs in your area, you identify the bugs, and you try to find out what they're doing and why. An example of this would maybe if you go outside and you look at the ants, find some ants. If you see an ant carrying a leaf, Maybe where are they taking the leaf? What are they gonna do with the leaf? Some other bugs we might see outside like spiders. I run into their webs all the time. So I see spiders a lot at my house. And then for step five, take a bug field trip. So you're gonna take a bug walk or a bug hike with an adult and see how many kinds of bugs you can find along the way. If you have one at home, take a magnifying glass with you on your hike and look closely as you can to the bugs on the ground and look for some that are high up in branches. So this slide has the links for the photos and videos that I used today for our meeting. Thank you girls for joining me.
There's going to be more Brownie Badge Work next Tuesday. And later today on our Facebook page, there's going to be an all-level activity. So I want to say stop sharing. Okay. All right. Bye, girls. Have a good day. Addison, did you have a question? No? Oh, okay. Bye. Bye, Madeline. <laughs> Oh, Melissa, your spider earlier. Good job. Bye, Melissa.